What's going on YouTube? This is JabberTech and today I'm just going to show you the Oxygen 11 open beta for the OnePlus 8 Pro. This was just released yesterday. I installed it on my daily driver which is something I usually don't do. But there's a feature here, there's a feature that a lot of people have been waiting for, including myself, that was just enabled. And that's the only reason I updated it. And boy, let me tell you, this was worth it. I'm super happy that I installed a beta on my daily driver. But let's just get into a couple things. Let's just show you what's new and overall, just give you a rundown of what you can expect when the Oxygen 11 full stable release is released. Hopefully, that's by the end of the month, but let's get into this. This is the Oxygen 11 beta guys and you can see OnePlus really redesigned it. And yes, let's get this out of the way. It does look very One UI-ish from Samsung. And that's what a lot of people have been complaining about. A lot of people don't like this fact that OnePlus is going the Samsung route and that they really copied them. But let's be honest, in the industry of tech, people copy each other. That's just the way it goes. And I'm actually okay with this. I think this brings the OnePlus line more into the mainstream. You might say no, you really wish OnePlus would have done their own thing and kept their own designs, and I'm with you on that. But one could argue that OnePlus is trying to be more mainstream, and OnePlus is a business, OnePlus is in it to make money. And one way to do that is to have a UI that's easily recognizable, easily navigatable, so that if someone comes over from another device, let's be honest, most people will come over from a Samsung device, they'll be able to recognize that the settings page kind of looks familiar to them. And having a familiar UI is one way that OnePlus can ensure people will feel comfortable switching over to their devices. That's just my general feeling about where OnePlus is going with this. Let's just take a look at what's new and let's take a look at some things that I've been anticipating and let's just take a look at the overall kind of change that OnePlus is implementing in the Oxygen 11 update. You can see their fonts change. Their font is a lot easier to kind of read and I think they do a pretty good job. They've spaced it out a little bit more from what I can tell and it's just very easy to read and it's just something that I, I actually like myself. I don't mind this at all. In typical OnePlus fashion we can still customize a lot of things on our device and they've They've made it a lot simpler in Oxygen 11 to get to that customizations page. And they did a nicer job of organizing it so it's a lot easier to kind of find what you want to find. Here's your accent color and it will change. This is black and red. But when you do turn on dark mode, that'll change to white and red, which I think looks really nice. Let's take a look at one feature that bummed me out the first day that I picked up this phone. And that's the fact that we did not have dual SIM enabled out of the gate. So I've had this phone now, I guess it's been about four months. I'm not entirely sure when this has come out. I think it's been about four months. We did not have dual SIM here in the US. A lot of other countries already had dual SIM, but they were trying to work it out with Qualcomm. I understand they had some issues trying to get 5G on both of those SIM cards. Well, finally, they've enabled it. And that's the number one reason why I downloaded this beta. This is one way to actually have two SIM cards, one for voice, one for data, or switch between voice and data. It's just something that's very useful to a lot of people, and I'm super glad I installed this update, not just for the dual SIM capabilities, but I also have to mention, and this is something I mentioned in my full review that I noticed was a little bit laggy. When I go out of service, when I'm in the subway, and I come out of the train stop, or when we go from station to station, I noticed it took a very long time to lock onto the cell towers. Well now, I can tell you this is a lot faster. This locks onto those cell towers very, very quickly. Another thing that I noticed, not only does it lock on super quickly to cell towers, but it also stays locked on. In certain subways between stations, I was not able to get service, and I just tested this yesterday on my way home. In certain stations, going from station to station, I still had service, so I don't know what they did, but the connection strength has definitely been improved. Let's take a look at the network settings, because a lot of you might be interested in this. Now, these settings are the same for both SIM 1 and SIM 2. You can change the name of the SIM card. This way, it's easily recognizable to you. You can enable Voice over LTE. Enable Wi-Fi calling on both or one of those SIM cards, and of course there's roaming. I like the ability to kind of choose different options for diff different SIM cards. You might not want Wi-Fi calling on one, but you want it on the other one. Same goes for roaming. Go into your preferred network type. If you don't want 5G enabled, if for whatever reason you don't want that enabled, you can just leave 4G so it won't lock on to that 5G towers. Smart 5G is based on your usage scenarios and will logically match your 5G networks to hopefully improve battery life. Let's see how that goes on the long term. And then this is where you set your default SIMs for your voice, for your messaging, mobile data. And for smart callback, if someone calls you on, say, SIM card 2 and you call them back, it's not going to call them on SIM 1. It'll recognize that they called you on your SIM 2 and it'll dial back from that SIM card. 
And for data connection, I don't know why this is an option because voice over LTE should work. It just must be some compatibility with having two SIM cards. But if you are on a voice call, you can enable this so that you will get data from that second SIM. What I like about dual SIM as well is you can set data limits on each SIM. So for the purposes of this video, I did set a limit at 1.6 gigs for my second SIM card with a warning at 1.5 and it's going to turn off automatically once I hit that data limit. So this can ensure that you don't get some huge bills from your second SIM card if really that's just a voice card that has a little bit of data on it. But overall I do like the design. I do like the way this looks. Now you can see here I'm missing some icons. Again this is a beta. This will get ironed out later. I just want to show you a couple things in dark mode here. You can have it turn on automatically. I have mine set to enable from sunset to sunrise just because during the day I actually prefer kind of seeing a white background and at night I like to see a dark background. Turning on dark mode you can see it also changed the accent color there so instead of the black and white I get white and red. I quite like that so let me just show you what that looks like again. There's the black and then with dark mode enabled it changed it to white with the red accents. I really like that and I like this dark mode theme. Let's go ahead and talk about one of the most anticipated and most requested feature on the OnePlus forms for the OnePlus 8 Pro specifically. That's an always-on display. It's really beyond me that a thousand dollar device did not even have an always-on display, but it's finally here. I don't know what took OnePlus so long, but it is here, and it is actually kind of nice. They do have some pretty interesting designs. This one is a clock design. You always get to see your battery and, of course, your notifications. And there are a couple different clock styles that you can choose from. So you do have one that spells out the day, shows you the time. You also have this pretty cool Insight one which honestly, I don't really know what it's telling you, but it does let you know how many times you've unlocked your phone. I've already unlocked my phone about 50 times. That's a little crazy to me, but you do get this pretty cool animation graphic showing you how many times you've unlocked it. And it supposedly has some other information there, but I really don't know, but I do think it looks cool. There's other options down here as well. So I just want to show you that you can kind of take a look at it if you want to. But my experience with the always on display is that it really takes up a lot of battery life. Now again, I know this is beta, so I don't want to talk too much about battery life, but if the stable build does not improve the battery consumption of the always-on display, this is not something that I'm going to use. I think it drains just a little bit more than I'd like it to for the actual usefulness of having an always-on display. But what is useful, you can schedule it. So for my personal preference, I usually like to leave my always-on display from about 8 o'clock. This means I'm either out or I'm at home and I'm just leaving my phone on the table or at the bar at the restaurant and I just kind of want to glance over and see what's going on. So I like the ability to schedule a time that this always on display will actually turn on. So well done to OnePlus for doing that. But just in terms of the always on display, I think it's a little bit primitive when other manufacturers such as Samsung have really stepped up their game when it comes to an always on display. For example, letting you put your own graphic in the middle. Maybe in the stable build we'll get that, who exactly knows. One thing that's not working but I am excited for it to show up on the stable build is the dynamic wallpaper. So if you take a look at my Pixel 4a here, as I swipe down for the notification, you see my wallpaper kind of moves to the background there simulating that it's kind of stepping away and letting me do my thing. And the same goes for if you open up your app drawer, you can see my wallpaper just kind of shrinks to give the illusion that it's moving back. And you can see that it's moving forward when, I, when I'm done with the app drawer. That's one thing that's not working on the OnePlus 8 Pro. A couple more things I want to show you guys when it comes to the Oxygen 11 Beta. Now if you hold down the power button, you get this all new power screen that kind of gives you a lot of information about what's going on. If you have Google Pay set up, you'll see all of your cards right at the top. You can also take a screenshot if you want to. And you have your power controls down here, which I think is pretty awesome. So you can see that I have my Nest thermostat giving me real-time information that it's 82 degrees. I can also turn on lights if I want to. So if I just tap on one of these tiles here, it'll quickly turn on my light and I can tap it and turn it off. Another thing that I like, if you do have security cameras, you can set them up here and TinyCam Pro is taking advantage of this and will automatically open it up and show you your camera view. I do like the new power menu. I think that's something pretty awesome and you can arrange it. You can get rid of certain lights if you don't want them to show up. You can do whatever you need to do. Another thing that I like with Oxygen 11 is, is just the ability to see what's playing. So, for example, you have all your multimedia controls right over here from your, from your notification shade. 
And if you scroll over, you can see what's been playing. You can scroll over again, you can play one, you can stop the other one. And you can also quickly choose where you want that to play. So if you want it to play to your phone speaker, if you wanted to play to any of your Bluetooth devices, if they're connected, you can easily go in and just select that device and your multimedia will start playing from there. And you can quickly thumbs up or thumbs down, move to the next track. Another thing that's new, whether you like them or not, this is very similar to Facebook Messenger. We now have bubbles with Android 11 with Oxygen 11. Taking a look at bubbles, you can place them on your desktop and it will go to some predefined locations. So you can move them around and see what's going on. You can see the person's name. You can see the person's profile pic if you have one on your phone. Taking a look at bubbles a little bit more, if you open up one of the, well, bubble, you can see your whole conversation here. You can reply to it. You can do whatever you need to do here. You can also quickly exit it out, but your chat will remain there. So if you chat with someone throughout the day, it's a lot faster. It's a lot easier than opening up the actual SMS application. Just have your bubble and you can go ahead and open it up. Clicking on the plus, it'll show you if you have any more bubbles from any other apps that use this feature. So this is here. If you guys like it, let me know what you think about these bubbles down in the comments below. One feature that's coming to Android, and you probably already have it on your phone, whether you realize it or not, this is called Nearby Share, and it gives you the ability to share files directly with people around you. And let me just show you how that works. So if I want to share this photo here with somebody nearby that I saw a bear, I can open up the Share application, choose Nearby Share, unlock a device that's next to me, and you'll see that you get a little pop-up saying that someone wants to share with you. And right over here, you can see that Jabber's phone becomes visible. And on the other device, you have to accept or deny. So let me click on accept right there. And quickly and fast, you can see that it shared that photo with the people around me. So I think this is super huge. Now the weather app has also been updated again to follow that One UI type of theme. All of the information's on the bottom quadrant, on the bottom half of the screen. So you can scroll up and you can see a little bit more about the weather today. Again, it's just a nice refresh. I actually like this. In terms of battery life, I am noticing a little bit of a drain. I don't know if that's because I have dual SIM enabled, which really wasn't the case with other OnePlus devices. It might just be the beta program. It might just be that some kinks aren't aren't really yet ironed out, but I am noticing a battery drain, so I just want to let you guys know if you do want to install this, if you do want to rock with the latest build and kind of test it out for yourself, that you will probably have to charge this twice a day rather than at the end of the night. That's just my experience. I could also be super excited. I could also just be playing with this a little bit more than usual, but battery life, you probably will take a little hit, and I hope OnePlus does iron that out before the stable build comes around. One thing about the beta build, if you are interested in testing it out, so far I've had no real issues with it. Everything works as it should. I did not lose any of my data when I flashed the beta, but once the stable does come out, you will have to reformat, you will have to flash over a stable, and that will erase all of your information. So if you want to take that risk just to play around with it for about a month, I can recommend it again. I don't have any issues. I have not run into any, any sort of kernel panics or anything that would make me say don't use this as your daily driver. Again, if you want dual SIM support, if that's important to you, definitely flash this beta. It's well worth it. And it also locks onto the signal a lot faster than it did before. So that's also a huge plus. So that's basically it when it comes to the new options in the OnePlus 8 Pro. We did get the always on display. We get dual SIM support. We get a new UI. We get new options from Android 11. And again, guys, a lot of you might not like this. A lot of you might think of OnePlus as selling out. A lot of you kind of want to keep OnePlus as that small company in your mind, but they are not a small company. They are getting bigger. They have bigger dreams. They want to get that number two spot in the Android market. And in order to do that, they have to make a more familiar operating system so that more people can buy it. They want to become mainstream. They want this to be a phone that anyone can pick up, especially if they had a Samsung phone. They want them to pick up a OnePlus device and feel at home. So I give them credit for that. I want OnePlus to get a lot bigger than they are because they do make some truly great hardware. And in order for them to improve, they have to have more sales. They have to make more money. And in order for them to make more money, they have to make a familiar device for just about everyone. Not for the Android geeks, not for the Android nerds like you or me. But I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to know anything about this beta build, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.